What's up? So, new video. Um, it's been a while. So, what I've decided to do is to go five lug on my street car so that it'll be cheaper to run this car at the track. So, I'm gonna take this. So basically this tutorial will explain how to remove the spindle and ball joint removal and things like that because the fronts are a bit trickier than the rears even though the rears have more complexity to them. Uh, let's just get started. So basically this is what you'll need for your 5 lug. If you're going to do a swap like mine, make sure you get a 32 millimeter front spindle. Uh, that's what fits with my B-series, but if you're running a K-series or something that uses a 36 mil, then go ahead and get the JDM. 36 mil, Civic Type bars, and USDM Integras. They use 32 mils, and then the Japanese JDM Type R Integras, they use 36 mil. So while you have these out, it's a good thing to check these, make sure they're in good condition. These came off of my track car, so they're in pretty good condition. And if you flip to the other side, it's good to check the ball joint condition, make sure the boot's not torn or anything. I just replaced these, and they were probably the hardest thing to do during the swap. The way I found to be the most easiest in changing it would be to flip this upside down so this would be on the ground and then this would be facing up towards the sky and I took off the boot and put a few stock sockets and stacked them and then just went to town with a hammer a really heavy hammer and just beat it out because the AutoZone uh, ball joint remover tool doesn't fit unless you remove both the rotor shield as well as the rotor itself for you to get access to it because if you look it's kind of cocked to one side it's uh so when you put the ball there's not much area here so your best bet is a hammer and then to put it back in same thing I just Crush it in with a hammer and maybe if you want just use a block of wood or something so you don't ruin your, your new ball joint. So to replace the spindle, first things first, just mess with the cotter pin, top upper control arm to worry about first. I can use my pliers. <laughs> Then you'll have tie rod. I'm gonna move this out the way. Don't need it right now. Another one. One, two. And then your bottom. My thumb's covering one. All these nuts are gonna be, oh, fudge. 17s. That one was probably the toughest to get. So then you just start wailing on it with a hammer on the side of the spindle. And uh, if you hit it hard enough, they should come loose. This 
these top ones loose. This bottom one's loose. Or this tie rod one is loose. This bottom one, I've never really had good luck with them, so I have to use this ball joint remover separator. And basically that puts tension on it so that when I hit it with the hammer, it can come out a lot easier. So, got the spare tire and I cracked it. Um, there's quite a bit of weight. I had to use this plus the breaker bar plus an extension to get to it. But, it's loosening up quite nicely. To where I think I can just use this now maybe. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna use it anyways. Back up it goes. The way you use this, you put the, this on top of the control arm and this underneath the bolt. I'm gonna use the socket that I don't really use to put it on the nut of the ball joint. That way, I don't ruin the threads on the ball joint and they can be reused. That was it. The last thing I have to do is take off this brake line for the caliper and not make a mess on my driveway. So I'm gonna go get the drip pan so none of that happens. Now with the drip pan, I'm gonna use this 14 mil. Yeah, 14 mil for the brake line. Gotta break that loose. And don't lose those copper washers that go in between the banjo bolt because that's basically your gasket.
Awesome. Everything is done. Not really. <laughs> That's a relief. Something I found interesting was that my Taiwan hubs are relatively silver, but my OEMs have this nice rust ring around them. I'm kind of curious if that's from the CV axle or what, but it's looking okay. It's recommended that you change this axle nut out every time you use it, but I don't see any reason why not reuse it. I've done it in the past with no consequences, so I'm going to do it again. That should be tight enough for now. I'll go back and tighten it later. So once you're here, if you want to change out your, if you want to change out the bellow for your steering rack, which is over here, you have to take off your tie rod. And to loosen the tie rod, I found it easiest if you went under from the bottom and then hit the hammer from the bottom to the, the right, the right. So it'll swing this way. And then once you give it a good couple couple hits, it should come out. Um, then you wanna leave this basically where it is. And you wanna take the other end. And you wanna twist this, uh oh no. So you take a 14 and that should fit over here. And then you'll take a 19 again over here, and then you'll just twist um, lefty loosey for out. So, and then you're trying to keep that nut on the steering rack relatively in the same position that it was in, so that way later when you put it back in, it should be same settings. But because I'm doing the fire plug, it's going to. I'm going to need an alignment regardless. So this is just to help me not kill the tire on the way there. Awesome. So you can see it's torn right, uh, right in this area. It's a little bit torn, so mm, that's why I'm changing this out. So the bell is a little bit harder than I thought. Um, this is basically what the bellow is, uh, just typical boot for your steering rack. Pretty annoying. Uh, I had to cut this off with the Dremel just because my screwdriver and clippers method uh, didn't work. I tried to use pliers and clippers to try to clip it off. It's a lot easier when you just use a Dremel, just zip zip and that goes off. This I use the pliers to take off just because it's like a coil ring. Uh, the new kit uses zip ties, so if I ever have to change it out again, it's gonna be a lot easier. Boom! And that's about it. Just gotta button a few things up, like tighten this last axle nut. have ourselves a five lug. One. One five lug. There we go. Front's done. Other side's the same, so I won't record that. Um, yeah, when I get to the rear, I'll get to the rear. But today is just, that's it. So these are the boots that I changed out. This one has the top just uh, fell off. That one is in decent condition, I guess, minus this, so it makes it useless. This one is in multiple sections. So let's get to change out the boots because you don't want a leaky steering rack later on because you have your steering rack unprotected without these bellows. 